Hey everyone, welcome back to the Soccer Queens podcast. So this episode is extremely special and I know I say that almost every episode, but it truly is because there's a first time for everything and this is the first time I am having one of my athletes on. I normally have a ton of performance coaches, nutritionists, sports psychologists, but now I want you guys to hear from an athlete who has been through the youth soccer system and who is now doing amazing things in college. So Carly, welcome. It is so great to have you. Hi. <laughs> I am so glad you're here. And I, I know like your story is just, it's very out of the ordinary. And I think it's going to be so valuable for, for everyone listening because it, it really shows that that with good work ethic, anything's possible. So I know there's a lot to cover. Let's just first start where, where you're from, uh, when did, and when did you start playing, and, and what were some of the first couple teams you were on? Um, so I am from Columbia, Maryland, um, Clarksville more specifically. I started playing when I was four, I guess. So like many um, young girls, I was kind of just put into the youth soccer system. Um, but I loved it. Um, so I started playing like at the rec level at SAC, like the clinic. My mom was my coach. Um, and then after, I guess, when I was like eight, when the travel like program started to pick up, I played for Thunder for like a couple years. I and remember then, Thunder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the old days. Um, yeah. So that was like when WAGS was really still yeah oh my gosh throwback <laughs> yeah. um and then I ended up moving to SAC to play travel there I think I'm getting this right <laughs> it's such a long yeah it seems like ago. forever ago doesn't it <laughs> um yeah so I moved to SAC um and I they had this was when they had like several tiers of their travel team and I was playing on the third team I guess at that time um, with some like great kids and good coaches and then after was this before ECNL even existed yeah this was well before ECNL well okay. yeah. I guess yeah a couple like, of years maybe years before yeah. ECNL became like the big thing yep um so I was on that team for two years and then I got moved up to the premier team on SAC um where I played for four years um which was really, like, that was the first time, like, I got introduced to, like, playing at the national level and, like, the regional level, um, and I started playing ODP around that time, um, so I went through the ODP um, system also, and then that was, I played there for four years, and the, so then my sophomore year of high school, um, I moved to Maryland United for their ECNL team, Okay. And that's kind of where I stayed for the rest of my youth soccer career. And I also played high school at River Hill. So yes. yeah. And yeah, and we'll we'll get into that. But yeah, it sounds like just such a a natural trajectory of starting at just like the, the basic levels. Uh, what I think now it's called like rec or select. There's there's so many names now. Yeah. But um and then you made that transition to travel and and how old were you when you transitioned transition to travel? Um, so I think I was nine. Because I remember I decided to play rec for an extra year instead of going to travel um, when that, like, became available. Um, I think I just wanted to, like, be able to do other things at that time because I was nine yeah. years old. Um, but yeah, I think I was nine when I really started the whole travel system. Yeah, now I, I do remember that because I met you when I think when you were 12. Yeah. Um, which also seems like another lifetime ago. <laughs> we were so young. <laughs> um, but yeah, you were 12. And I do remember you were you were on SAC. You were a really solid player. The first thing that stood out to me was your skills were were amazing. Um, and you were, you were a midfielder and you were just extremely sharp. And I was, I remember being so blown away and, um, just to let everyone who's listening know. So Carly, and I don't even, even know if you knew this Carly, but you, you were probably one of like the first people I ever trained. 
which is wild. I met you when I was um, at Alonzo's at Accelerate Your Game. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay, okay. Now I, I think you might have been one of like the second people, but like, uh, and this was like in like, yeah, like my first like year or two of being a coach. And yeah, it was just, it was just so nice to, to work with you. And like, the first thing I noticed was you were, you were super technical, but your, your work ethic was just incredible. And you were good with uh, criticism and feedback and anything that you need to work on, you, you took control of, uh, especially at a really young age. And that's something that I saw just stick with you through your high school years and, and your high school years were awesome. <laughs> like uh, we can even, let's just talk about your time at River Hill High School. So uh, I played there when I was younger, top team in the state of Maryland for uh, public high schools. So you, you made varsity as a freshman, correct? Yes. Yeah. So talk about what, what was that like going in as a freshman and putting in the work to, to make it? Oh, God, this is like a trip down memory lane now. Um, yeah, we're going there. <laughs> I don't know. So as like a middle schooler and like just like growing up in the River Hill area, like as a soccer player, you just kind of knew that River Hill girls soccer was like this great team. Um, and so like coming out of eighth grade, I was like, oh, my God, like I want to make varsity so bad. Yeah. Um, and like just going into that team with um, Coach Song, they had such like a rich tradition of winning and winning state championships and just being a really good team that um, really added to like the players and like them as a player and as a person, Um, just a really good program. And so being a part of that like really meant a lot and going into that as a freshman, you knew that it meant a lot. And all the like older players set that example, and all the younger players, um, especially the ones that like I came in with, um, we all knew that we wanted to keep that tradition going. Um, so throughout those like four years of high school, it was really a, it was just like a great journey, um, just to like be a part of a team that worked so hard to have such high goals and expectations, and then like, we still got to maintain that. When we were there so yeah you guys had such a, a great four years there and you went in with with Bridget as well um yeah she was um the year you after. made it as oh yeah that's right and then you made it as a freshman with who else was it um I believe Megan, Megan Chun Vic yeah. Tran and Gracie Siebold we all made yeah Gracie and that's Siebold. like it's so hard like going in with such a small group of freshmen like it, like River Hill, like it was intimidating. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was the crazy. girls on varsity, the seniors. Like when you're going to like the the preseason camp and then tryouts, it's like holy crap. So how did you how did you handle just all of that intimidation and just like rising to the occasion with all these like high level players? Um, well, I just remember the songs really, and like all the players on the team they really emphasized work ethic and attitude. Um, And so if you had those two things, you would like fit into the program just fine. And um, those were always two things that I thought that I like brought to the table as well. So um, I think being a part of that team and having those expectations for yourself really, they made it a little less intimidating on, on that level because you knew that if you put in the work, like you would be appreciated for that. Yeah. Um, it was hard to like live up to the expectations, like talent wise, there were so many amazing players, um, but they were all very supportive and like they all kind of knew that the freshmen were like the next generation. So everyone kind of like lifted you up and it was a scary experience, especially like, um, our first game, I think I remember we played like McDonough. Oh yeah. <laughs> first Russian game. Thrown into the fire. <laughs> yeah, thrown right into the fire, like started. And like just had, I was terrified because McDonough is really good. I think we lost that game handedly. Um, but I remember one of the older players saying to me like, 
don't be nervous. Like, this is River Hill. We expect to win. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes it less intimidating, but it was yeah. kind of a good, like, um, little piece to hold with me for the four years that, like, have high expectations for yourself and for the team and thing will go in that direction. <laughs> I think that's that's powerful, and I I know you mentioned that work ethic and attitude were a big part of the River Hill culture, and those are two things that you can always control. Like I don't care like how much of a hot shot you are, how talented you are. If you're if you don't have those two, then you're gonna crack under pressure. And a, another strength that you possess is you you rise to the occasion anytime you're under pressure or there's some sort of challenge coming your way you're just like let's go I like bring it on I'm ready <laughs> now is is that something that you you had at a at a really young age did you have to like develop it or it's just always been in your heart I I don't know I think I guess that's always just been my mentality because it's not like I'm not cool under pressure at all I I get so much anxiety like about playing like before games even sometimes um, especially before like a tryout like situation and I think I've been in so many situations that are high pressure like that that you can't run away from it so my like biggest instinct is to just jump in and just kind of dive right into it that's always been kind yeah. of my like philosophy as a player so I guess yeah. you're gonna have to deal with the anxiety and like deal with the pressure um just don't let it crush you just kind of dive right in anyway is what I've always um thought to myself <laughs> yeah yeah and the, the anxiety it's it's normal I mean it happens to everyone even professional players um no matter how long you've been playing or how good you are at this it's it shows you care um but like you said it's what you decide to do with that anxious energy are you gonna be strong or are you going to just kind of hide and crumble and I think you can use anxiety to your advantage it doesn't need to be this this bad thing um and, it, and it's human of us to to go through something like that now as far as club let's let's transition here so you uh decided to go to the ECNL team Maryland United and I'm sure a lot of people listening are familiar with that club there's still ECNL now, but what, what made you want more um, as far as travel? Was it a college recruiting decision just to develop as a player as well, be around higher level players? What, what, what was it? Um, yeah, so I think like all of the above, I loved my four years at SAC. I had two great coaches and um, coach Greg Wright and coach Chris Goodman. Um, oh yeah Chris they, is awesome <laughs> they really brought me along as a player like I was so much better at the end of those four years than I was when I came in um but by the by the time that I decided to make that switch um with Vic Tran we both knew that we like basically wanted to play in college mm -hmm. and um I think at that point in time ECNL was really the best way to do that um it just provided like this huge platform that wasn't available and at that point I think a lot of players were deciding like different paths they wanted to take which is totally fine and um, there was just like a lot of different um, there was a lot of stuff going on we were in high school and um, I think a lot of players wanted to play in college and so we decided, I decided that Maryland United was going to help me get there mm -hmm. um, and help me develop as a player. And that there really wasn't, if I wanted to do that, I had to go to that level. Do you feel that, so let's uh, talk college recruiting. Do you feel that you were a little bit behind in that process? Like you had waited to make that transition at ECNL too late? Um, I, yeah, I kind of did. Uh, I did start, I was emailing like coaches, like my freshman year. Um, but yeah. it wasn't like, I was very, not 
to say that I wasn't serious about it. It just, I wasn't doing it as much as I should have been, or I just really didn't know, like, what the (laughs) process really entailed and, like, how, like, persistent you had to be to get noticed, especially when you weren't at ECNL, because it was that much harder to get coaches to come out to your games. Right. Um, So I don't think I was super late when I was a junior, but... A lot of the top programs had already like had their classes um, set and yeah that like kind of put a lot of panic because <laughs> I would email so many coaches and I would get back like a good number that were like sorry like <laughs> we've already filled our 20 or 2022 class I was like all right <laughs> well <laughs> try somewhere else um, so it's, it's stressful and yeah, it's um, very stressful um, it's like a race against time and thousands of other girls. <laughs> yeah. um, but I thought the biggest thing for me was just to be persistent and keep emailing, keep emailing. Even if like I didn't get a response, I would just email them again for the next tournament. Um, and I got a lot, I got some looks that were from teams I didn't email mm-hmm. and I just found that the most important thing for me was to um, like cultivate as many options as I could. Um, Cause even though I did feel like I was a little bit behind, I, there were still so many good options out there and um, the best way to like find where you're going to go is to just be persistent. Yeah, and you you absolutely were. I mean, just observing the whole thing, I was just like, oh my gosh, like Carly is just like, she's crushing it right now. And she's just, she's just going for her dreams. And I, I do want to dive into you attending the UNC camp for the first time and what happened there, because I remember you getting back from the camp and you were a junior and you were like, oh my gosh, like this this is the culture, like, this is it. (laughs) Yeah, um, so I think I remember you actually were the reason I went to the camp in the first place. Really? I don't even remember. Yeah, well, so it's funny, so it was my This is so long ago, I seriously am so old. (laughs) Yeah, it was the summer before my sophomore year, um, and I had, like, every soccer girl dreams of playing at UNC since like yeah. very little like I was eight and I was like I want to go to UNC because me and Ham went there yep and exactly that was like my life goal yeah um, and so I was thinking about going to the summer camp um because I really wanted to play there and it was so hard to get like noticed by them mm-hmm. um but I really didn't think that I would ever have a chance at playing there at all or like even getting looked at by them. But you encouraged me to read the book, The Man Watching. Oh, best book ever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. Okay. Now I remember. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, It was Um, the book. (laughs) I was like, like, I want to go here. And you were like, you should totally read this book. So I did. And, um, I like flipped to a chapter one day and it was about the recruiting process and they were talking about, how they found a lot of their players at their summer camps. Uh, at that point, like before I read that, I was like, I don't know if I should go. Like, I don't think it, anything will really come of it. And I read that chapter. I was like, okay, mom, I'm going. <laughs> and so I did. Um, they have these like all-star games. Um, and I got picked for one of them. At the and, camp. Yeah, uh, at the end of the camp. camp. And I remember after that game the first thing Anson Dorns ever said to me was he's like where's Carly Wetzel he's like you're tough as shit (laughs) I was like okay I was like thank you I'm coming here now (laughs) Um, I can agree (laughs) so that awesome that like sealed the deal for me I was like I have to come here so I went to their summer camps the next two years I went to their ID camps whenever they had them um and I just kept emailing them and I was like hi like remember me because <laughs> yeah. um, even then they already probably had the players from my class that they were going to commit and yeah so, they did wasn't it completely filled up already 
I think so. That yeah. was, yeah, that was like a big uh, they had, setback. They had their, um, players for like two classes below me, and I was just like, oh. yeah, yeah, they're early. <laughs> they're so early. But um, um, I do want to uh, backtrack a little bit. So like, mm-hmm. the, I just. I remember you coming back from the camp and you told me that story, how Anson had come up to you and he, he said that you're just tough as shit. Um, I was just like, yeah, like that's another one of your strengths and something that you br- have always brought to the table. And I just thought it was just amazing out of hundreds of girls at this camp, like he noticed that in you mm-hmm. and that, that really said something. And is, is that why you were just like, okay, like I actually might have a shot at this. Yeah, I think so. I think, like, reading the book, which describes so much of their program and the types of players and people that they, um, like, took in and the philosophies that Anson had, it really emphasized, like, players that were just really hardworking and blue-collar and tough. Yeah. Um, As well as, like, these crazy talented players, um, which I more identified with the first group <laughs> yeah <laughs> um that's okay <laughs> but I was like well if I can play at a top program I think it can I think it can be here because of like this facet of what they value um and I really like clung on to that I thought this was where I had to go mm-hmm. because of that so yeah and yeah. then I guess it was the next year um most stressful year of your life (laughs) most stressful year of my life yeah that was crazy but man you handled it (laughs) the next summer was before my junior year and I went to the summer camp and then I went to another ID camp a couple of weeks later um and that's where Anson told me that if I like got in to UNC I could have like a basically a recruited walk-on spot Mm -hmm. on the roster so um I took like all APs my junior year I like killed myself in school yep (laughs) (laughs) it was crazy and um I would like see you at the field like on the weekends like I don't know like on a Saturday morning at like 8 a.m like and you're just like running sprints and you're like yeah I just like finished studying and like (laughs) the same these are next week and I'm like oh my god like this girl she's a machine but she is she's persistent and that's thank you (laughs) yeah I it was crazy especially with um ECNL we would have like three practices a week at 8 p.m like an hour away from where I live I I had I had this aversion to doing any of my homework before going to practice. So I would get home, this part I don't recommend, but I would get home (laughs) after practice at like 11 and I would have to do my calculus homework. And it was an exhausting year, but it was really worth it because I really, really wanted to um, get in. And I think um, along that, path I also was like keeping in touch with other coaches um keeping my other options open in case that didn't work out um but I think that that opportunity really emphasized for me like the value of school um yeah like I I was always a pretty like I was a pretty good student but I think that um like that chance to go to a top school and a top program was really what pushed me to just really focus on my academics and really pursue that as well. And I still like hold that value today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that. Yeah, it's, it's huge. And uh, no, I, and, and the craziest part was like, from my perspective, like you see, you see someone just work so hard on just both their athletics and academics, like just go above and beyond. I mean, your grades were incredible. Your SAT scores were insanely better than mine ever were. (laughs) And I went to Johns Hopkins, but you just, I was like, man, she's going to get in. She's going to get in. And then just seeing that first uh, failure, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so So Long story short, I didn't get in. <laughs> um, Which is, it's, it, yeah. it's so hard out of state, and we talked about this. They, yeah, what's great. the, they take how many percent uh, from North Carolina? Like 80%. 80%. 80%. 
yeah, it, it's just, it's almost impossible for, for Maryland students. Even with the, the weighted GPA that you had, the high SAT score you had, like you met their, you like exceeded their standards pretty much. And I remember being floored and um, I remember we were also on the phone and it, it was just, it was devastating. Um, I, it was a, it was a real bummer. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough, probably few weeks. Um, because you, you put in so much energy into something and then it's just taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just, so what did you do just after hearing the news and how did you work through it and just pivot? Um, God, it was, so it was a really hard time. Um, Cause that was what I had like been dreaming of since I was like eight years old. Um, but as soon as I got, like, the rejection letter, I called up Anson, um, and he was so good about it. He said, I think, I still remember what he said. It was, like, he told me a story about how he, when he was applying to colleges, he applied to, like, three, like, really good schools and didn't get into any of them. Mm -hmm. ended up going to the school in Texas and then ended up transferring to UNC um That's and then so years crazy. later that this college that rejected him asked him to come speak and he <laughs> said no because you guys rejected me and I'm so <laughs> badass about it. I think he actually did end up going to speak but um he he was just saying that not to let that rejection hold you back or tell you like who you were and um, I really took that to heart um, I had two other options at that point to either go to UAlbany mm -hmm. and play or go to McDaniel College in Maryland and play um, and I ultimately decided McDaniel I knew the coach there um, coach Sandy she was amazing yeah. Um, she coached me when I was in ODP when I was like 12 as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that um, academically I would be sound there. I got a good scholarship too, which helped. And I knew the program was really a hardworking blue collar program that um, also held those values. And so that's, I decided to go there. Um, and I think it was a hard, it was a hard decision to decide what to do next because I like didn't even really let myself think about like what happens if I don't get in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was a tough, it was a tough couple of months um, after that happened. Wasn't really sure where to go next. Um, but I like, I just felt like the only way was to keep moving uh, like when something doesn't really work out, there's another door open that you just, you might have to look a little bit harder for, but it's there. Um, and so once I committed to McDaniel, I really like picked myself up, <laughs> um, like really got back to work and, um, I had a great two years there, um, really like thrived. I got to start. I, played with amazing girls on an amazing team um and I like absolutely fell in love with what I was studying as well so yeah. I was like probably one of the best decisions I could have made at the time mm -hmm. um well one of two <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great decision it really pushed me forward um and I did really well there so I think like at that time I, the next winter, I was actually asked to come back and talk to some of the kids at River Hill for like an NHS uh, honor society thing about college. And um, I like was able to tell them that one of the things that I knew they would be going through in the next few months is that they might not get into their dream school. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> that's real talk and, though. I know that's harsh, but like, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> even you gotta be happens. realistic. Yeah, a lot of kids at River Hill are like their dream school is like Harvard or MIT yeah. and those schools are insane to get into even more insane when you're at River Hill because everyone is so competitive yeah. um, but I thought that that was I think that's an important message for um, kids in high school 
just going to college to hear and also for girls um, trying to play in college because mm -hmm. things probably, they might not turn out how you expect them to or how you really want them to, but that's not to say that it's not the right path for you and that you're not gonna be happy and that you're not gonna like be exactly where you wanna be. Yeah, and I, I like that you said that like going with McDaniel was a great decision at the time. I mean, you, you love the coach, the girls, the program, very competitive team in the Centennial Conference, play, played against Johns Hopkins. Actually, I was at that game. You guys almost beat Johns Hopkins. Very, very good game. But you had an amazing time there, and you, you made the most of it. But at the same time, I know UNC was still in the back of your head, which is okay because that's, that's what you wanted from the beginning. You're like, this, this is the dream. So what, what happened when you got the – acceptance as a transfer <laughs> um so I was I was doing really well but UNC was always in the back of my mind I guess I just can't really like let things go um yeah <laughs> um but it was such a important um like dream to me that I figured I had to at least give it one more shot um try again um see if the option was there and I didn't really put any pressure on myself to like, you, like to decide what to do at that moment. I was just like, just give yourself the chance. Um, I didn't even know if I would get in. Um, so I applied last February um, before I went to, well, no, while I was in Spain. So That's anyway. right. And then Corona came. <laughs> so Corona all this stuff came, was coming. I got kicked out of Spain um, <laughs> and back home. And then, um, I did like a three week quarantine period away from my house. And then <laughs> the day I got home, I got the email letter that I got in and I was really excited, but I was also really anxious because I had no idea what to do. <laughs> um, I like, I applied yeah. without, um, like calling Anson first or talking to my coach or anything. Like I just did it. Um, so I had to go through all of that and like I was so anxious to talk to Anson and like see if there was even an opportunity to like still play. Um, I was anxious to talk to my coach and tell her that I was thinking about doing this. Um, but um, Sandy was really understanding. She, I think I had told her a long time ago that um, I was trying to go to UNC as well and she I think she knew that was important to me um and Anson when I emailed him he we talked on the phone and he said well we have a huge roster they have like 30 girls on, plus 30 plus girls on their roster um he said but you could come in as in the fall and um help us as a manager and maybe be a practice player and then you'll um, get to join us in the spring and have the opportunity to join the team. And I really didn't know what to do at that point. Um, this so was let's point. just, uh, for the record, so <laughs> this, this was crazy. So you, you got home, pandemic hits the world, mm -hmm. you have to quarantine. Yeah. You get in, you're like, oh, this is exciting, but oh gosh, now here we go again. Time, <laughs> time to get back to work, potentially. Yeah. And then you talk to Anson so there's no guarantee you're even going to be on the team mm -hmm. then on top of that you have to talk to your current coach that you might leave which is that's not a comfortable conversation to have because you feel like you're letting your coach and your team down so you're like literally being hit from like all angles <laughs> yeah. but yeah. you're still set on your dream so I it, it's hard you're like oh my gosh like I want this but I don't want to like burn bridges or it's not guaranteed I'm going to play soccer in college. If I switch, like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. So you sat on this decision for like a couple months yeah, uh, or maybe like several months actually. So March through like July, I guess. Yeah. This, yeah. Basically. So let's talk about how you made the final decision. Like I know you didn't flip a coin, even though I recommended that. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> terrible terrible I advice. I recommended that too. <laughs> um, hey, it would be over quicker, I guess. But so, yeah. how how did you make the decision? Agonizing. Um, 
Well, it was really hard because I had so many good things going on at McDaniel. Um, such a good team, such a good school. Um, and I didn't have the promise of playing soccer um, for a while after if I were to transfer um, or even maybe at all. Um, but then soon after, I guess in like July, we found out that McDaniel's season was going to be canceled. Um, so <laughs> no telltale when I would get to play again there either. Um, and I think after that, my head was a little bit clearer. I still wasn't very sure. Um, but what allowed me to like push through that and make the decision was that this had always been my dream for so many years. Um, I a, probably would never forgive myself for not taking the chance. Um, and I, I was really, um, conflicted over this question in my mind, like, when do you try again, and when do you, like, or when do you decide that you should let something go, and I was like, well, considering myself as a person, I've always said, try again, and give it a chance, so I was like, I think you've made your decision then. Um, I knew that nothing would be really guaranteed at UNC, but, um, I would have this amazing opportunity to play with the best players in the country and the, in the world, honestly, at my age and um, play for some of the best coaches to ever do it. Um, and that was, that was the dream since I was little. And I was like, okay, I have to, <laughs> I have to do it. I know it's scary. Um, it's a really scary situation also to like jump in as a transfer. You don't know anyone. <laughs> um, it's a pandemic, so it's not like you're going to make any other friends either. Yeah, um, so true. <laughs> I literally decided like three days before classes started at UNC that I was going to go um, and hopped in the car like two days later. <laughs> um, Very uh, photo finish there. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Very true Carly fashion, push it to the last minute. <laughs> I think you you had texted me, you're like, yeah, I'm driving down. I'm like, oh, I guess she decided. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I texted my friends as I was driving there. And I was yeah. like, By the way, like, I transferred. Um, they're like, oh, congrats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know you had talked to a lot of people, like you've talked to like coaches, you talked to a lot of your friends and, and you you talked through this decision, uh, got their feedback, but at the end of the day, like you made the decision for yourself and what you were feeling in, in your heart. And would you say now after the, the fall semester, uh, first semester at UNC has been completed, you are happy with your decision? Absolutely. Um, I think I knew like, basically like the minute I got there, but like after, like I got to start practicing, um, I absolutely knew that it was the right decision. Like, I was so happy um, just being around, um, like, a team of that caliber and um, such, like, amazing um, young women and such amazing coaches that really challenge you to be a better player and a better person. Um, I was like, okay, like, I know why I wanted to be here all these years, and I know I'm here. Um, and so even though... Um, you know, playing time, definitely a far fetch. Um, nothing's really guaranteed in the future. Um, the coaches have been amazing. They've given me this great opportunity and I'm very lucky that I've gotten to be a part of it. Um, and I'm really happy that <laughs> I decided to try again. So, yeah. I think, yeah, it was, yeah, it was just so cool just hearing that he, is letting you be a part of it. Um, I know his roster is extremely full, but um, I think what Anson saw in you was just your ability to work and fit into the culture and just continue to grow. And that's, those are the players that he, he wants in his program. And even though playing time's not guaranteed, just the, the fact that, that you're there, um, the, the girls sound awesome. Obviously, you have great coaching, head coach, assistant coach, the technical coach. Like, it's all just 
it, it's magical. I mean, like anyone would dream to be in that environment. And it's just, it's exciting. And I'm just excited to see what happens. And yeah, it's just, are you like just in awe? Like, I mean, when you told me, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's so, that's so amazing. Cause just seeing everything you've gone through, like just, it really was like blood, sweat and tears. Like the whole, the, how the whole thing unfolded. <laughs> yeah. It was a very long, um, journey process I guess and it's still not over yeah Um, I mean like I really have to earn my spot to stay um but I think it's really exciting at the same time um I'm like very nervous I guess that oh like what if it doesn't work out but at the same time um they've given me this great opportunity and I've gotten here and I'm like, I can't let it slip away now. So I am grinding all winter. Um, and I'm just very excited for the opportunity that's ahead of me. So I think it, I've learned like how much it took just to get to this point. Yeah. Um, So I think that that probably gives you more confidence going into the winter because you've you've been there with, with all the hard work. And now at this point, it's like, okay, like back at it, like, let's do it. Um, stay humble, but stay hungry as well. Mm -hmm. And I know like winter, like you came home, you're like, let's work, let's go. And I know you're diving like headfirst into an off season program. You are working on your strength, your speed, your conditioning, you're keeping your skills up, all the pieces that you need to, to be a complete player. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's so exciting. I'm just like, so I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. And <laughs> not, not only just like the, the, the soccer, but uh, you did really well academically too at UNC. I mean, it's just, it's such a hard school mm-hmm. and just to go your first semester there as a transfer and, and thriving in, in that side of it is, is awesome. It's not, not an easy school. <laughs> Now, is there, is there anything, uh, I just want to wrap this up, is there any piece of advice that you would give a young female athlete who's just starting the recruiting process and, and wants to play at a high level and, and play at this dream school? Well, what, what would you say to them? Um, I guess I would say a few things, um, starting number one with the unusual circumstances that you all are in right now. Um, I know that with the pandemic, it doesn't make recruiting any easier. Um, and as someone who had a rather unusual process as well, um, I would say just hang in there and stick it out. Um, there's still hope and you will like find a place for you. Um, I assure you. And especially with the pandemic, like everyone is going through it. So you don't have to feel alone or like you've been um, forgotten or like your chances are gone because they're not. Um, Just be persistent. I think persistence is one of the biggest things. Um, You're going to come across, I emailed like hundreds of schools. You're going (laughs) to like, I think 80% of those, maybe more, are going to be no's. They're going to be, sorry, we're full. Um, Sorry, like, we don't think you're the right fit. Or maybe just not even a response at all. But you have to keep bugging them, keep being persistent, be annoying. Um, Like, force, like, if you really want to go somewhere, force them to look at you. Go to the camps email them every chance you get for your tournaments, remind them who you are, Um, just be persistent. Um, It'll really pay off in the end. And I think really focus on your academics (laughs) besides the obvious value of doing well in school. um, It'll open so many more opportunities for you um, than if you just let that aspect of your life like slide because a lot of coaches really value that in a player as well. They want to see that you have the right goals and that you are challenging yourself in every aspect of your life and not just on the field. And that said, it will pay off in the future when you 
want to get a real job that is hopefully like very cool and um, something that you really want to do. So don't let that aspect of your life slide just because you're like focusing on soccer. Focus on both. It's possible <laughs> and you can do it. Um, and then I think, I guess my last piece of advice is to shoot high. Um, I had the most unobtainable goal <laughs> set for myself and I didn't let anyone tell me that it was unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, I just went for it. And, you know, maybe you get there, maybe you don't. And maybe you don't get there the first time. And maybe you try again, then you get there. But if you shoot high, you'll open, again, you'll open so many other doors for yourself. And you'll be a better player and a better person because of it. Um, you're not going to fail like you will ultimately be better for challenging yourself in that way um and who knows the world works in funny ways so you could get there <laughs> it does it, it really does and yeah I truly believe that focusing on what you control can control and then just let let the chips fall into place and yeah, failure, failures will be inevitable, but then just get back up, pivot, do something else, but always focus on what you can control and persistence, work ethic, attitude, all of those totally controllable. Now I do want, um, other girls, I know you mentioned like not feeling alone in the process. So I want you to provide your Instagram handle just in case someone might want to reach out and, whether they're going through something similar or they just need recruiting advice um, just to connect with you. So if you would just want to say um, your handle where they can find you. Yeah, let me just look at that real quick. Um, so it's <laughs> um, my Instagram handle is Carly W underscore 34. Um, and Carly is C-A-R-L-Y. So that's my Instagram um I guess that's the best way honestly to find me so yeah it uh all the best conversations happen in the dms <laughs> so I think it's so funny you don't have your instagram handle memorized I just don't remember where the underscore is <laughs> oh okay gotcha so what, what I'll do is I will just tag you when I post this on igtv uh and my youtube so everyone will be able to find you and yeah, thank you, Carly. This was awesome. And I just, it's been great observing your journey and just seeing you blossom in, into this amazing athlete and human. And you, you deserve every good thing that's coming your way. And I, I know with everything you're going to work on this winter, it's, it's going to keep getting better. You're going to keep leveling up. So this was, this was fun. First, thank first you. player guest. <laughs>